We've got big tour news if you want to come and see us live. Jordan's been working on Campman's backstory. And find out what happens when you buy a dog in a dodgy lay-by. It's fair to say that the new episode is a sexted classic. I was on really good form. <laughs> and so modest with it. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Help I Sexted My Boss, the podcast where we help you navigate the challenges of modern life, answering your 21st century questions and finding solutions to everyday dilemmas. Like, how do I start turning into a cowboy? Stop. How do I stop turning into a cowboy every time I hear the new Beyonce song? It's so good. Told you. I told, thank you. I told I don't... you country music was... Coming back. Do you think she's done country because we made country cool again with Tix and Dallas? No, she's done country because she's actually from Texas. Yes, Houston. Thank you. Um, and she's done a track called Texas Hold'em. Has so she? Yeah, yeah. And it's great. Is it? It's great, yeah. And is it possible to gain your dignity back after having your holiday photo exposed? <laughs> and what should you do if you've accidentally sexted your boss? But we're not usual agony ants, are we? William Hansen, the UK's leading etiquette expert. No, we're not. Jordan North, new host as of April of Capital Breakfast. I'm more save the apostrophe, you're more walking catastrophe. Oh, great. And that's from Jesse. Thank you. Um, we should do, yeah, can, Gene Devers, can you do an I'm more, you're more based on capital or global or any of those words? I feel that someone could write a good one. We might see each other because you're always on Heart Breakfast and that's just... I'm not always on it. I've done it four times, yeah. but yeah. We, and that's in the same building. Are you, is your studio above or below? Same floor, but just Oh, is across. it the same floor? Yeah. Oh, okay. I think, it's, it's, I'm trying to get my head around it all. Yeah. Yeah. We might see each other. Yeah. It's, it's great working there. I seen James O'Brien and Fangild him the other day. Oh, did you? Yeah. It's weird. Who is James O'Brien, for those that don't know? On LDC. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and when they were showing me around, um, I went into Chris Miles' studio and he gave me a big hug. Oh. And he was really Did he reply to your message yet? Yeah. 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 Okay, good. Um, and then I, I, I got him to show me the news agent studio as well, which is another very successful podcast. You are aware you are one of their new key talent, not a competition winner. <laughs> It feels like it. In okay. there. And then, yeah, it's, it's great when you walk past, you see everyone there. Ooh. Don't, we, like, I have a vision by May, you'll probably have a restraining order from Emily Makeless. <laughs> <laughs> I suspect that's the direction no, it's going it's, in. It's soaps I'm more obsessed with a bit. Soaps? John Sopel. Oh, sorry. sorry it's, it's, like it's what we call him in the building. Um, <laughs> oh, I've been there five minutes. <laughs> uh, it's, it's probably soaps I'm more, and Lewis as well. Right. But I listen every day, so I've got to have it. I've been like geeking out. Bless you. Yeah. Because like, I'm a radio geek. It's what, I've, yeah. Mm. Always wanted to do. So I can't wait to start. How exciting. Well, Thank look, you. it's a new bottle of Dubonnet. Oh. For a new chapter. Oh, oh, God, that's tight. That's what she. Um, and actually, thinking about it, Jordan. Oh, well, I was going to do a funny joke then. Oh, sorry. Go on. That's what he said. I'm still waiting for the joke. That was the joke. Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, I think about it. We a few Gene Divas have asked me this. Oh, oh, and um, oh, we're a bit low on gin. We are a bit low on gin, actually. Well, I love that one. Yeah, we'll switch. Oh, gee, just, 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 just. <laughs> he is pouring so much in. You are, you are draining that. Oh, get my tongue in that. He's talking about the gin bottle. <laughs> I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do a toast first. Okay. Who should we toast? Um, toast to all the lovely gene divas who have been in touch to say congratulations on my new job. It really, really does mean a lot, so thank you. Thank you to those gene divas. I, I wish I could reply to all your messages, but I can't because there's so many, but thank you. I think what it's like when you get 2.4 million. Yeah, I can yeah. imagine. Only aspire to that. Your DMs must be popping. Have you had any tip pics yet? Any what? Boob pictures. No, funnily enough, I don't think people don't send me those. I don't know why. We did a whole video last week on um, the difference between grinders and holes for um, salt and pepper. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. I accidentally opened one on holiday in Skegness. A tit pick? Are we allowed to call it that? I think so. Yeah. Um, a, a photo of decolletage. Maybe that's the more appropriate saying. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Never really been a boob man, so. No. <laughs> Have you not? <laughs> Where was I going with this? Yes, a lot of G and Divas were asking me after your news was announced, if presumably you're working in the mornings, as of April, mm -hmm. 
Does that mean that we're doing the podcast in the afternoon and you can actually drink the damn drink? Uh, I, I do have a little sip. Yes, but, you know, we could get, you know, early days, we would get properly we get squiffy. Amid, didn't we? Well, obviously, because you were then going on to work in the afternoons, we had previously not been. Yeah, we'll probably have well, to Well, you hadn't. Probably have to start recording after midday now, so. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Oh, that's going to be a barrel of laughs when I'm knackered think... and I've been on air all week. Yes. <laughs> oh, good luck, everyone. I think also, so. I'm quitting smoking as well, so I'm going to be oh. insufferable. <laughs> oh, God. We could do, a, as, as a G&D would call it, a sloshed cast. A slush cast. Which I quite like. Cast, yeah. Cast, cast. Oh, God, yeah. Oof. Well, good luck, everyone. But no, like, like I said on uh, Friday's bonus, I'm, I'm absolutely buzzing about the new job. I just can't wait to get going. Well, have a bit bit of time off. Bought a new notepad. You've bought a new notepad. Yeah. Oh, I'm, there's no stopping you. I was walking walking around Leicester Square, Global's building with it, and I looked like a bit of a geek, a new moleskin with my name on it. <laughs> oh, it's got your name on it. <laughs> I was like, yeah, this isn't cool. I bet pre- Genuine leather embellishments and initials. <laughs> yeah, I, I bet, love it. I bet previous capital <laughs> presenters haven't walked. I was actually walking through and making notes. Does Ro have his own? Uh, possibly, <laughs> possibly. I love it because this has also given me a whole new source of material. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I realised halfway through when I was like in a meeting, I was like, yeah, with my little new notebook. Bless you. Mm. Well, it's very exciting. We'll all be tuning in. Thank you. In. Weeks to go, of course, yeah. until, until that moment. And come and join us. If you've never listened to, to Capital before, come and join us. We'd love to yes. have you. We'd love to have you. I say yes, I'm not, it's got nothing to do with me. But. <laughs> You'll listen. Oh, of course, no, as I said to you last week, Mikey and I, we shazammed a couple of songs as well. We were like, this is quite a good song. Because that's what they do. Yes. They play the best music. Yeah. Like, literally, you listen to it and it's just constantly, it's like really good vibes when you listen. And, yeah. And it's national now as well. Yes. So you can listen to it wherever. Yeah. Okay. No, it's marvellous. Thank you. Um, now, before we get into today's episode properly, we've got some news. Good news. Don't worry, everyone. We've got news. Oh, yes, yes, yes. As if there hasn't been enough. It's big news. It is. Yeah. Particularly if you like Guinness. As you know, or or not, because I don't, uh, as you know, we're heading out on tour later this year. And loads of you are joining us for our sold out shows in Manchester, Glasgow, Newcastle, London, Birmingham and Bristol. Who are... Don't do that on stage. But... I love it. We don't want our g and across the Irish Sea to miss out. So, we are adding two extra dates to our tour. Hey! Woo! Yes! We are going to be playing Belfast on Friday the 7th of June and Dublin on Saturday the 8th of June. Now, of course, we've been to both those cities before on previous tours. We lost you in Dublin because mm-hmm. you went off with your family. Yeah. Saturday night in Dublin. Yeah. Yes. Luckily, Saturday night in Dublin, you are contractually obliged to stand on a stage. So at least you won't necessarily. If you're going to get lost, you can get lost after the show. But am I contractually obliged to stand on the stage sober? No. Oh, great. <laughs> great. Great. I think Dublin from last time, I mean, Belfast was chaotic in a nice way. Dublin, though, was particularly chaotic last time. Oh, everyone was hammered. In a good, yeah, in a good, it was way. good way. It was really good. Maybe. Yes. Maybe I could do the infamous guinness joke on stage in dublin and belfast yes mm. maybe well, there is there is a there is a low-key petition on gov.uk starting for you to actually do that guinness joke I just on our other dates worried about getting cancelled don't forget we cut it i did it when we were last in in but that dublin. was because it was going to live permanently online yeah there's a difference i think between you know one night only <sighs> Across eight nights. Okay. Anyway, we'll see. Who knows? Well, we would love to see you there. Uh, any, because anyone can come. You don't have to live over in that. Those yeah, parts you can of make, a, make a weekend of it in Belfast. Yes, or, or Dublin. Dublin yeah, you, or both. We mm. don't mind. Tickets will go on sale this Friday, the first of March, at sextedmyboss.com slash live. But as always, if you sign up to our sexted newsletter, you can get a pre-sale link and a code to access the tickets 48 hours before the general release. Everything you need to know is at sexedmyboss.com forward slash live. And remember, the dates for your diary, Belfast is Friday the 7th of June and Dublin, Saturday the 8th of June. We cannot wait to see you there and indeed everyone else on the other dates as well. Jordan, I am aware and I don't quite know, I don't know the sort of the reveal here. I'm going to ask you this. Okay. On our, of course, some of these, all these episodes go out on YouTube now, a couple of, mm-hmm. either a day or, or later on after the audio release. And a few people slid into my DMs. And mine. 
and said, were you, Jordan North, a couple of weeks ago looking at a naughty photograph whilst we were playing the Williams or Jordan's Joke of the Week jingle, one of those jingles? Because the camera over your shoulder obviously picks up what is on your phone, as it does with me. Yeah. And anyway, I went to the time code and I looked. And to be honest, I couldn't really work out what it was. Maybe it was two people amorously. That's sort of vaguely what I could work out it could be. But probably if you hadn't said, oh, is that a naughty photograph, I probably wouldn't have thought that. So loads of people messaged. And then I got one message in particular, one DM, mm. uh, that said, hey, uh, just to let you know, I think you should delete this. Uh, and they kind of zoomed in on a picture that I swiped across. And it was just because when some, when the oh, wonderful Gene Divas sent us, um, me a joke on Instagram or Twitter, mm. I screenshot it so it's in my phone. So I was sliding through, and it looked like I was sliding through some... A hidden album. Yeah, mm. and I wasn't. And then this picture was sent, and I was like, what the fuck? What is that? And it does make you question yourself. I was like, what is that? So then I rung Stu. Yes. Executive Apparently Amer this turned into an entire drama. Executive Emeritus, Stu. Then really? sent him a picture of the screenshot. Then we had to ring Alex... Self shoot Alex, yes. who edits the podcast, and was like, "Right, you need to cut this because I was worried." Even though I was like, "I've not got any of those pictures," so it was bugging me. And then I went through the picture that everybody was going on about. Like you said, it was really hard to tell what it was, but it was a picture I took of a scene from one of my favorite TV shows. So it was that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll describe it for people. It's a man, a bald-headed man in his... Is that... Is this Benidorm? No, just keep it down. He's lying with a dressing gown and belt mm -hmm. on a sofa, sort of in what isn't quite doggy position, but he's lying down. And for some reason, there's a banana... In the foreground, but out of focus. Right. So I was, when I, so I was like, I, you can't quite make it out on this screenshot that had been sent to me. So I was yeah. like, what is that? What is that? Um, and then I was thinking, oh, maybe it's like a rude meme that somebody sent me in a WhatsApp group, mm. uh, that kind of thing. So that is, um, <laughs> <laughs> that is Eric from my uh, favorite sitcom at the moment, Two Doors Down. Okay. And Eric had, uh, in the episode, uh, a camera up his ass. What did he call that? Oh, an endoscopy. An endoscopy. And as they were pulling it out, there was a couple of issues. <laughs> All his neighbours came around to see him and one of them gave him a banana because <laughs> it's very funny. And me and my uh, sister-in-law, Kate, are, are obsessed with this mm. show. So I sent her a picture saying, have you seen this episode yet? It's probably one of the funniest ones. And poor Eric was in a lot of pain. But if yeah, you look at it, it, it looks like a man... I can see... It, it looks like a man's being bummed with a banana. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the picture, and then it caused such a fracas. Yes, it did. Look at me saying fracas, but that's the picture. <laughs> I don't have those pictures on my phone, but yeah, that was it. You've got to watch Two Doors Down. I'll it put it on my list. So funny. Eric's my favourite character. He was also in Taggart, I realised. Oh, there's been a murder. There's been a murder! Yes. There's been a murder! Has been a okay, matter. We've had enough of you screaming TV catchphrases. Has been another matter. Uh, also, whilst I remember, a few weeks ago we were recording the Dish podcast, the Waitrose podcast. Like, I had so much fun on that. It was great. There was a lot going on that day. There was a lot going on that day. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, behind the scenes. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, let's not go into that. Also, but, yeah. as we arrived at Dish, there was a sign on the door that said, you know, Dish with Nick Grimshaw and Angela Hartlett, and today with. Uh, William Hanson and Jordan North. Brackets, this is an innuendo-free zone. Is that what it said? It's like you've booked the wrong guest. Brilliant. I didn't <laughs> see that. Again, there's a lot going on that morning. Yeah, there was. Um, anyway, and maybe because there was a lot going on that morning, Jordan's new thing. Tell us about your new thing with water. Well, we were uh, about to start recording, and one of the lovely members of the production crew said, uh, do you want still or sparkling? And I said, oh, I'll have both. And that's my thing at the moment. But I thought when you said I'll have both, you wanted a glass of each. No, I have. So still and sparkling in the same glass is... Uh, Disgusting. It's, no, it's fantastic. So sometimes sparkling, yeah, is just a bit too fizzy and a bit too much, a bit too powerful. Right. In the sparkles. Yeah. <laughs> How about the sprinkles? <laughs> <laughs> but if you have 
sparkling and a bit of still. It just takes the edge it's off just it slightly a bit. flat, sparkling water. No, and then everybody was way into it, and it was no. it was mm. my thing. And it, it was recently introduced to me a couple of weeks ago when I was out. With some introduced friends. to you? Yeah. Um, my. Can I say I think people might have been going along with it because they knew that maybe you were in a no, slightly so, delicate position. I was at a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic! <laughs> oh, no, but the person I was with. Um, at the restaurant was like, I'll have both in the same glass. And I went, oh, go on, I'll try that. And I'm, I'm really into it. So next time you're out, ask for both or tap because <laughs> it's cheaper. Yeah. But it's it, if you're listening now, Gene Divas, try it. It's a game changer. Also, whilst we're talking about sprinkles and sparkles. And a spunk. And spunk. Um, I'm, I'm, now I've got a bit more time on my hand. Yes. Yeah. Hands. Hands. Now I've got a lot more time on my hands. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, I've been looking into Campman's backstory. Oh, Campman's backstory. Yes. Do you think Marvel would be interested? I, I really do. Yeah. So, you mm. know, all like superheroes having Achilles. Yeah. Campman's is getting spanked. <laughs> right. So, if you spank Campman, but you've got to put him over your knee. And if you spank him, that's like his Achilles. Okay. <laughs> also, okay, I'm, what I'm worried about <laughs> is that Jordan has been making. Noises that he would quite like Campman to do, and apparently Campman's me, to do uh, an appearance on tour. I'm just going to say this now. I'm not being spanked on the stage of the London Palladium. Well, you are, because that's his, that's his Achilles. And yeah. he's, he's obviously uh, a superhero needs uh, an arch nemesis. Yeah. Oh. Big Daddy. <laughs> Scrub Daddy. Scrub Daddy. No, 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 because we won't have rights to that. I'm thinking... <laughs> Big Daddy used to be his ex, and now okay. they hate each other. Yes. Yeah. And um, we'll keep working on that. He he fires dildos, but out of a gun. You know, like rubber bullets. A Nerf gun. Yeah. You know, like rubber bullets in the nineties when there's a lot of riots and stuff with football hooligans and that. Right. Bring the tone down. So he fires dildos, and they get you right in the eye and the face. Well, it would. They'd be hard. And um, his Achilles is um, rimming. Good to know. <laughs> So if he gets rimmed... I think those, those tickets to Belfast and Dublin have just sold out. <laughs> so if he gets rimmed, yeah. he's, he's fucked, basically. <laughs> so you're going to be camp man, and all I'm saying is, with the, when we go on tour, there's always, like, a role for Ben to come on stage. <laughs> so all I'm saying is, producer Ben may be getting rimmed on stage. Right. <laughs> That I really thought into. I'm gonna, yeah, I've got a lot of time. Can on my I hands. ask you a question? Yeah, sprinkle, sparkle, spunk. Which of us are doing that? Well, you're camp man. Yes, and he's uh, big daddy. Oh, he's big. I thought you're big daddy. I'm not big daddy. I'm just the writer. I'm the creator. Oh, I see. You're written yourself out. I'm like Angeli. What was he called? Stanley. Stanley. Yeah, I'm like Stanley. So, so, and then I was thinking after the interval on stage. Oh, this is all at one. You used to come out and we'll get you on wires and stuff, and you'll start like fighting midair, and then we'll flip Ben over and you'll rim him. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to say. <laughs> and we'll fire like spunk out on the crowd, but like not real, like whippy cream or something. Right. Not, not real spunk, unless we could get, like, I don't know, bull semen or something, because there's a lot of that. Are you okay? Ben will come out with, <laughs> with his big dildo gun and... Bow, 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 bow. Spunk man! Spunk, spunk, spunk! Dildos. And then... You'll, <laughs> you'll, you'll kill him with by him getting rimmed. <laughs> You're right, Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah it's been a week and a half since he left the BBC and now look at you <laughs> yes the shackles are off is the real me <sighs> okay I've got, I don't think anything I could say is going to be any interesting how's your week been <laughs> yes <laughs> Mike and I balled socks on the sofa last night oh did you yeah boring job he, really boring you, job. Do you want to come down and do my odd sock? I, do you odd? have an odd sock, odd sock basket like I do? No. We have a laundry hopper. Oh, what's one of them? For, for, uh, it's washed laundry. It just needs to be either folded or ironed. Oh, okay. And then we have a laundry basket for dirty. And then like a canvas hopper. I've got like a big um, uh, bag for life. All right, Stewie. <laughs> 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 oh. We just need to 
talking about dildos and now we're talking about... <laughs> there is something for everyone on this podcast. There really is. I've got a big like bag for life where I put all my odd socks in. Where did the rest of them go? Can I ask? It's I want bulging my bag at the moment. We had socks. <laughs> it's bulging. I just, yeah. <laughs> Stuart's lost it. <laughs> 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 I've never seen him like this before. <laughs> when people wash socks, because mm-hmm. obviously we then ha- we have a lot of sort of navy socks or black socks that sort of all sort of look the same. Yeah, and we're quite particular about them Shock. being paired together. If if I, I what I want to know if you then sort of ball them up when you take them off your feet to put them in your laundry basket. Mm-hmm. If you then wash them balled up, is that as hygienic? Does it do a proper wash? Because then presumably... Well, this is your area of expertise. Well, I know. I've never tried it. No, you've got to unball them. Yeah, but then you have the pain of balling them up together. It's fine for colourful socks. A ball ache. It is a ball ache. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, that's that's sort of what What else has been going on? Well, I... I need to sort that out. I've got time on my hands now, so... Yes. I'll just start pairing up. In fact, bring yours on next week. I'll do them. I hung your shirts up when Ben and I came around for that curry, so you owe me. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So you can do my socks. Okay. Yeah. Um, I feel a bit bad because last week when we were talking about my trip to Miami and you were like, is that all you've got from your Miami trip? Because I sort of didn't really come up with much. There are two things that I had forgotten. Oh, go on. One... At, we had arrived, we just landed in Miami and we're sort of moving our way through to passport control, which is always tense in any country, but particularly America. Oh, God, yeah. Although Americans are probably friendlier to begin with than British people, it, that doesn't start at airports because they're quite intense, yeah. I think. I think that's fair to say. Anyway, but this man was lovely. He, was, he wasn't actually one of the um, immigration officers at the desk. He was sort of just ushering people down into lanes. Obviously, he knew it was the flight from London. And he said to me, he went, Ah, oh, Liverpool beat our team yesterday. <laughs> and I went, I'm so sorry, we're homosexual. And walked <laughs> off. Who did they beat? I have no idea who it was. <laughs> but whoever Liverpool were playing about four weeks ago. Don't assume I'm interested. What? I'm so sorry, I'm homosexual. <laughs> yes, I'm not interested. Um, and, and then another sort of lapse of... Um, a lapse of intellect, I would like to say, on behalf of this person, um, sitting in a cafe, and I was re- we were both reading our books. And at the time, I was reading the excellent new Robert Hardman book on Charles III, our king. Uh, new King, New Court. And it's got a great big picture of the king on the cover. And this lovely American, she must have been in her mid to late 20s, initiates a conversation and went... She, I could see her looking over at me mm. quite a lot. And I sort of made eye contact went, hello. Hey. What's that book about? I'm sorry, she wasn't Australian. Um, what's that book about? It's like, how do I... Ask? Well, it's about the fucking king. All right, she was only being friendly no, and I polite. No, but it's got the king on the front. So, she, they don't know who Charles is over there. Well, they did, because then she went, oh, he's just got cancer. I was like, yes, I am aware. Mm. But what a... what a Oh, and then and then her friend, who was with, uh, with her, said to me, he said, oh, well, what I heard, he went, oh, how many courtiers did the did the queen have and um i was like oh i don't know well she she would have had quite you know loads hundreds over the course of her reign you know depends on what you define as a courtier oh i'm so glad i weren't part of this conversation what he had said in his miami accent is how many corgis did the queen Uh, have and i started to give this this answer about courtiers and i think he thought i was um, that she's picturing Her Majesty with with hundreds and thousands of corgis running well, she around. She did have her. quite a lot. Yeah, she didn't have hundreds or thousands. Well, she had a what on her ice cream. <laughs> she did have quite a lot. Anyway, he had a corgi. Going back to last time I was in America was um, in Florida last year. Oh yes, a Saturday night takeaway, and they asked you what you're there for, and I, had to, and I was like, I'm here for work. They're like, what work? I was like, Ant and Dad. Did you have the right visa? Yeah, and they were like, are they associates of yours? I was like. Mm. Got the numbers, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, someone behind me was like, colleagues, colleagues, I'm yeah. Like, yeah. But they do in proper interrogation. I know, them. and I always, and they go, where are you staying? And I always, I can't remember what date you leaving. I know, can't yeah. remember. It's quite, yeah. And I feel that that's not really what what you should be saying. Anyway, what a what a fun first half. Yes, there now, we go. With some trepidation, do you want to get your phone out and have a look for a yes. joke of the week? Be careful what you're angling and showing the camera. <laughs> Jordan it's is popped uh, up again. Look. 
<laughs> Jordan is shielding right. the phone from the camera. Shall we go to uh, Jordan's, Jordan's jolly, jolly joke, joke of, of the, the week. week? The man who invented predictive text has died this week. Mm. And I'll tell you the punchline after the break. All right, Gene Divas, thanks for sticking with us. And it's now time for the punchline of Jordan's Jolly Joke of the Week. The man who invented predictive text has died this week. Mm. Mm. His fun fair's next monkey, and may he rust in piss. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. Did you ever, did anyone in your family ever uh, mistake LOL for lots of love back in the day when LOL no, became a thing? Really. I always remember one of my friends, Beth, at university used to say that her mother at the start of sort of the lol life, didn't know what it meant, thought it meant lots of love. And they sort of decided as a family to, to you know, not say anything because it was endearing. She put lol on the end of every message until their grandfather wasn't very well. And then the messages would come through with, your grandfather's just been admitted to hospital, lol. Yeah. Thinking it was lots of love. And then they had to step it and go, mum, it, it means it means laugh out loud. Yeah, a lot of people used to get confused with that. Anyway, shall we move on? Yes, uh, it's time for your questions and dilemmas. Remember, if you need our help with something, then we would love it if you got in touch. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sexandmyboss.com. You can mm. DM us. Uh, we're at sexandmyboss on socials. Or you can write to William, who in the fullness of time promises a handwritten reply on one of our luxury greeting cards of executive seal envelopes. Self-seal. Self-seal. Um, on, on the letter writing thing... You've not done them for a while. No, because I'm writing something else. He's writing a book. He got a book deal. I didn't. And, um, I mean, I didn't get a Capital Breakfast show, so, you know, it's all levelled itself yeah, out. that's true. So, with the letters, I have paused writing. Mm -hmm. I will, as soon as my book is submitted, which is in a couple of weeks' time... I will resume. So if you think, oh, I haven't got one, we do say in the fullness of time. That could be anything from six days to six years. Mm -hmm. uh, but I will reply to every single one of them as long as you have put a return address and uh, you've written your address clearly. The address for that is on the website, sexandmyboss.com. Right, let's go to listeners' problems and dilemmas. Remember as well, we, we, sh we, we probably mm. don't say this enough. We don't know what's coming up. We've no idea no. what these are. So we don't, like plan it beforehand and stuff so i think it, uh, probably if you have listened to this long enough you probably know that none of this is planned we um hear them for the first time like you do as well so what have we got william Hansen? so also if our advice is a bit rubbish that's why yeah this is from anonymous no one listens for the advice don't say that <laughs> they do actually they do Hello, William and Jordan. I recently found myself in a bit of a weird situation at work. One of my colleagues from another site came to visit our office and in the middle of our conversation, he suddenly whipped out his electric shaver and proceeded to shave his beard on the desk. I was a little taken aback as I would consider this to be a firmly home activity rather than an office activity. He continued to shave for the remainder of our conversation, dropping little beard hairs all out over someone else's desk. Ugh. After he left for the day, I noticed that he had not cleared up his little hairs. Do I tell the person whose desk it is what has happened, or do I advise my colleague that I would appreciate it if he didn't shave mid-conversation? Is this now appropriate office etiquette, and I just missed the memo? Much love, Anonymous. Tell your colleague, uh, tell them, and then maybe go above you. Just be like, because then mm. the boss or someone from HR or whatever can say, we've had a complaint, and then they'll probably know it's from you, but it, it's better that way, I think, to go to your superiors and say, he's just shaved his fucking beard on me. I, I would People know, I'd it. say, I'd de deal with it directly and, and say to I him, wouldn't. could you not, cause sorry, could you not shave across a desk, whether it's your desk or someone else's, do that in the bathroom or at home, please? Save yourself the hassle. I'd just go above you and be like... What a sneak. No, because then they'll go, we've had a complaint, because they might not know where it's come from and it won't affect you. People do it in gym. I don't know where I am. With I that. don't like people shaving in the I, gym. I think shaving's a home or hotel activity, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Or professionally, go to a professional barber's or something. Yeah. But not. No, I don't love it. No, I agree. Let's all agree that shaving's a home or hotel activity. Agree. Okay. But no, and well, different advice there. Anonymous, I would say, uh, deal with it directly with them first, then maybe take Jordan's approach. If they don't and if listen. you're shaving at home because it drives. Usually your other half mad. Just remember to clean it up properly. Oh, yes. Yeah, because a lot of people, a lot of lads don't. Well, to be honest, even if you live alone, I would say clean it yeah, up. Yeah, no. Just nicer. Mm. This is from Terry. Dear William and Jordan, back in the early 70s when I was six, my dad was involved in a crime that made national news. Oh, Ooh. wow. That's, uh... What's Terry's surname? West? Because of this, my family were hounded by the press. Jesus. What? And we had to keep moving from place to place to try to avoid them. Oh, that's awful. What are we, is this the right podcast for this? Go on. 
I'm in, maybe, on. maybe it takes a turn. Come on, I'm intrigued, dear. Eventually, we changed our name and squatted in a house that wasn't connected to us in any way. Gee, this is awful. After a long and public trial, my dad and his accomplices... Accom- accomplices? Accomplices? Uh, were jailed for life. Anyone who's known me for a while knows my story, and I'm happy to talk about it. It's just as well. Is it one at train robbers? I'm thinking great train robbery. Yeah. Right. Recently, my friend's friend told them that I should not talk about what happened and should be ashamed of my past. Now, I think there is no shame attached to me. I didn't commit the crime and was merely an innocent casualty along with my family. The sins of my father should not be attributed to the offspring. Quite agree. I'm a law-abiding person, always have been, and this episode is an interesting part of my history and has helped me to make me the person I am today. Should I keep quiet about my past and be ashamed of it? Kind regards, Terry. Well, Terry... You have, thank God, given us something else. When we get interviewed and they say, what sort of problems do you get asked? We can now talk about this mm, one. This is a new one. I mean, we're all thinking it. It, it depends on the crime. I, I would say... If he's like... If he's you shouldn't dad, be ashamed of it. It was not nothing to do with yeah, you. So yeah, anyone that is but, making you feel bad is silly. I think it's something to share with close friends when you've got to know them and they know you. If you're using it as a sort of a bonding exercise with new friends, that is where I think maybe... We don't need to I know. mean, we say it depends on the crime. A crime's a crime, isn't it? But maybe not in professional situations. I wouldn't bring it up. But again, you've nothing to be ashamed of. No. But if it's like a... And I mean, I say if, if you play if it for a, laughs, but I don't. we don't know what it is. So, I mean, it's probably quite hard to play a crime for laughs. If it's a cool story. I don't think it's a cool story. I've just got a hunch. You know, Terry, maybe let us know what it is. We can provide know, more, yeah. more, uh, more insight. But don't be ashamed of it. But my advice, don't bring it up straight away. This one is from Tia. Maybe Maria. Do William Jordan an <laughs> EPB wherever you are. Where is he? Oh, God. Where, actually, where is he? Oh, he messaged he's, me. He's done Machu Picchu. Oh, is he what to say? Congratulations. No, he's joined a cult. Oh. <laughs> gonna come I've back. always said with Ben, you don't get a bigger cult than him. Yeah. He's going to come back with a skinhead. Oh. Him and... Cat. Cat. Right. Yeah. And Diego. No, Diego's not gone. I'm here still here, boys. <laughs> I'm still here. Do you know, can I just say, when you just did Diego there, I went, oh, I've missed that impression. And that's because you haven't done it every episode. I'm still here. I'm living at my um, grandma's and granddad's. They're passing me around like a box of chocolates on D-Wing in a prison, honestly. (laughs) (laughs) But I'm meeting lots of lovely people. I am. Honestly. I'm like one of the straight round Soho, honestly. (laughs) All right, Diego. Anyway. Dear William and Jordan and EPB, wherever you are, I want to get your opinion on a dilemma a family I know recently went through. This family found a cute little Rottweiler puppy, more dogs, on Facebook and decided to purchase it. You'd think when the person suggested to meet at a lay-by to complete the transaction, alarm bells would start ringing. Wrong. After spending... What's his name? I might have met him. (laughs) You know, I like a bit of rough. I love a Rottweiler. Them XL bullies are too big for me, though. Carry on. Oh. I, need to, I need to get back into work. It's, yeah. only been a, <laughs> it's only been a week and look at me. After spending upward of £3,000 on their new companion, they settled it into their home and started the puppy training. After several weeks, they noticed this little rot, rot viler had not grown and couldn't stop squeaking. So they were becoming increasingly concerned and decided oh. to visit the vet. <laughs> After a thorough examination, the vet had to explain to this family that they had spent a significant amount of money on what was actually a guinea pig. (laughs) (laughs) Piss off. (laughs) What a con. Are you joking? My question is... They bought a guinea pig. What is the etiquette when you've accidentally bought a guinea pig instead of a dog? Love the podcast. (laughs) Tia. Oh, sugar. What? You haven't just bought a guinea pig? No, I forgot to say. Oh, it's been such a mad week. Oh, Frank died. Oh. Sorry, it's been such a mad week. Yeah. Sorry. Who is Frank, for those that don't know? It's my mum and dad's dog. Sorry, that's so weird that I've just brought that up now. It's just... What it's, a roller coaster this episode! It's been is. such a mad week, and my head's all. I'm going out to see her. She was mortified. I rung her, and she, she she couldn't get her words out for crying. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, don't laugh. I'm not laughing. No, I'm going to tell you this because I don't want you to laugh. But my dad went background, and she was having a go at him, and he was <laughs> <laughs> already funny. Please don't laugh. Don't because I cried okay. all. 
because I found out just before um, I went on playing the game. My dad went background, um, pulling everything out at freezer because she wanted to put him in there because the. <laughs> And a quote, she didn't want him to go off in living room because it was really. <laughs> yeah, they wanted. <laughs> she wanted to put him in freezer, bless him, because they're, they're in Spain. They've got it's a bit hot at the moment. No <laughs> Spanish vets were shot, but they found one in uh, Mercia that were open. Anyway, so yeah. I forgot about that. It's been so, yeah, honestly, I, I, could, I couldn't sleep on Friday and Saturday. <clears throat> I'm sorry for laughing. No, it's fine. Anyway, sorry. Well, we're very, on behalf of all the Gene Divas and everyone listening, we're very sorry to I hear can't that. believe I didn't mention it. Anyway, carry on. Uh, what do you do if you accidentally buy a guinea pig instead of a dog? Well, um, did you get a receipt? Like, alarm bell when you said a cute little rot viola puppy on facebook can we google rot viola puppy and what are they well, meant the to look like puppies are quite small to be fair yeah but this has been some episode this <laughs> poor what? frank i'm going out to see her good give her a big hug sorry a rot viola puppy doesn't even look at all like a guinea pig does it not I think you've got to be pretty thick to think that that is. No, I'm so... well. I think they've only got themselves to blame. They found a cute little puppy on Facebook. I mean, come on. Mm. Anyway. Can I say that? We'll keep the guinea pig. Yes, yeah, it's still a pet. It's just a very expensive pet. Got a beautiful picture of Frank on my fridge now as well. Oh, yeah, that's nice. He'd, he'd. I know we laugh, but we got him when Bradley was really old, mm. really, really. So old. how old was Frank? Fifteen. Uh, Sixteen. Sixteen. So he's really old. And we, we got him when Bradley was really ill, when he was about 11, and when he was going through his chemotherapy and stuff. And the dog, like on Molly mm. and me, never left his side. They had like this special light, but even when Brad used to go and see him in Spain, he'd never leave his side. Anyway, oh, love you, Frankie. Well, the memories will live on. Exactly. This is from Aaron and Liam. To William and Jordan. To William and Jordan. Mm. Oh, okay. My <clears throat> colleague and I are big fans of the podcast, and we have a little problem for you. Oh, my God. We deliver artificial insemination animal semen all over the country. Oh! Get them for the tour. This podcast, co I couldn't this have wrote this better. Written. Written this better. Lads, we'll get your number after this. We need some fake or real semen for the tour. Yes. For Spunkman. Uh, Campman. Oh, Spunkman. <laughs> I can be Spunkman. Okay. I can be his little sidekick. Yeah, the little pocket rocket. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we can come on in one of those little motor car cave things. <laughs> You can be camp man, I'll be spunk man, and Ben will be big daddy. Oh, this shit writes itself. Anyway, lads, we'll be in touch, because if you've got any of that spare, we need it for Belfast. Why are we just doing that in Belfast? How will we get that past customs? I don't know, it's going right, in your if luggage. if they say, just say it's uh, white honey. Protein shake. Protein shake, and just dip your finger into it. It's just honey. Anyway. We deliver artificial insemination animal semen all over the country, but the problem is... All over the country, they deliver. How do we talk about our jobs when with polite company? When we mention it, they always follow up by asking how. How do you explain that it's transported in a fridge that keeps the semen at the same ball sack temperature and that somebody has to tug at the animal to get the semen and someone else has to insert it? Oh, insert it into the receiving animal. If the kind regards, Aaron and Liam. But sorry to all our vegetarian and vegan friends that are listening. Well, I don't think that's... Vegan, yes, but well, vegetarian. Well, be... no, because they drink milk. Well, when they say tug, did it mean like this? yes, they wink it yes, off. they wink it off. Yes, and then in uh, yeah, well, they have like they have, have big marigolds, won't they, to do that? Well, so, no, because presumably it's the protrusion insane, from right? the animal. Anyway, um, I'd honestly, I, I, I've said this many. Just own it. Just say we deliver. We deliver animal spunk around the UK. Yes. We're in the reproduction business in a big way. We're spunk specialists. Yeah. Just say that. We're back to grinder profiles, aren't we? Spunk specialists. Yes. Just, say, just own it. Just own it. Yeah. Maybe not if you're having a meal. No. Yeah. No, don't don't bring it up. 
But suddenly etiquette coach seems very normal. Yeah. What are they called those two? They are Aaron and Liam. Aaron and Liam, would that work in a water pistol? Because <laughs> that's what you can fire it out of on top. Yes. Yeah. Right. We'll get their email address. You can see Jordan's brain whirring. Mm-hmm. He's One meant more. to be planning for a new breakfast show, but all of a sudden we're, we're worrying about Nerf guns and dildos and all sorts for Campman and Big Daddy. Mm. Anyway, next one. Last one is from Kevin. Dearest William and Jordan, that's better. I need your advice on an unfortunate incident that occurred when we moved house. On the day of the move, I was showing the removal men around and on the way upstairs, I suddenly heard the sound of material tearing. I checked myself over and couldn't find any tears in my clothes, so I assumed it was the removal man as he had some sheets with him to cover the furniture. Later that evening, I got changed for bed. As I took my jeans off, I found an enormous rip running from the crotch right up to the waist on the rear side. I'd been walking around for 12 hours looking like I was wearing arseless chaps. My wife and kids found this hysterically funny, magnified by the fact that not only had I been to collect a takeaway looking like this, but we had moved to a townhouse, so anyone who had been behind me had to witness my pants showing through the large gap in my jeans on multiple staircases. So my dilemma is this, what is the etiquette for walking around in arseless chaps in front of removal men, and will I be sued for PTSD by the removal company? With kind regards, Kevin. That reminds me, I need to give you your arseless chaps back. <laughs> How long have I had them now? Don't know, too long. Oh, when did you give me them? Was it last year? I'll give them <laughs> back. Arseless chaps used to be very popular, but apparently the bottom's fallen out of the market. Oh, oh very good. Oh. I'm not wearing arseless chaps no, as Campman. that could be another one of his enemies. You know, like Spider-Man's got loads, Batman's got Joker, Riddler. Arseless chaps could be one. <laughs> And it could be a group of them. Yes. Loads of posh chaps with their arse out. Why posh? Well, just ask because chaps is posh, isn't it? Right, let me is write it? this down. Arseless chaps. Camp man. Shall we go back to Kevin's dilemma? Enemy, yeah. What's your um, advice? Kevin, it's a very funny story, but look, I would say there's not a lot you can do. No. Um, I think it's just, you'll probably laugh about it in time if you're not already. It's a great dinner party story, so keep it for that. And, yeah. And remember... You didn't look very hard, though, I would say, when, yeah. you, when you were looking to see if you could find any tears in your clothes. And, would and, it not have been drafty all of a sudden? Yeah, wouldn't you notice? And over time, that story's going to get better and better. Yes. And then in two, three years, it's going to be nothing like the truth because you'll no. embellish it, embellish it even more. So just keep it as a good dinner party story. That's my advice. You'll be very popular on Hampstead Heath. Own it. Mm. Yeah, it's good. Thank you, Kevin, for sharing oh, your... Oh, Hampstead Heath. What? He could be another one. <laughs> Could be a giant hamster. Hampstead Heath. No, Hampster Heath. Oh, Hampster Heath. Yeah. Could see what he can fit in his mouth. This shit writes itself. Honestly, I'm going to do a graphic novel on this. A graphic novel? Yeah. What are you going to do with your weeks off? Uh, I, I, I'm already nearly finished Modern Family. <laughs> I don't know what. Do any of you like, want to go out after this? <laughs> Oh, no. my God, yes. Normally, it's like, oh, I need to go. I've actually got to go to the dentist after this. So. The dentist? Yeah. Are you having more work done? Um, Can we also talk about... you mean about... work done? Well, you've had your teeth done. You've yeah. talked about it. Yeah. Few people asked me if I had done your makeup for your new capital photo. No. No. Why? Apparently, it was on my best work. Oh, oh it's good. Yeah. It's... Yeah, you look very good. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, right, anyway, I think we should wrap up there. It's, it's been... It's, it's yeah... It's up there, isn't it, this episode? <laughs> it's, it's up somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, thank you for your questions and dilemmas. You can listen and watch every Tuesday and Friday. And on the next episode, we have a special guest joining oh, us. Oh, yes. Really Very special exciting. guest. Slowly obsessed with. So uh, let's just say he's an expert in making things sparkle. Oh, mm. lovely. We'll see you on Friday. Goodbye. Goodbye.